Can I just follow on that, uh, General Hamm? Elizabeth Yu Miller from the New York Times. You said there was no official communication or formal communication with the rebels. Can you say there are no Americans on the ground, period, uh, with the rebels or on the ground, period, Americans of any kind? Um, it's been very clear to me, and I think anyone who has heard uh, the, the president or the secretary of defense uh, speak to this, you know, no American boots on the ground. There are no American boots on the ground from this coalition. I, you know, I think there are, frankly, I think there are some American citizens who were in Libya who chose not to leave, uh, but, but no, one who's no one who's a part of this coalition uh, is, on, is on the ground. I, I don't know how to be more clear than that. The, no military boots on the ground. Uh, General Hyatt, David Cloud with the LA Times. Um, I know you said you're not providing close air support to the opposition, but if the opposition were to leave Benghazi, were, were, to, were to resume essentially offensive military operations and were to get into a clash with Libyan forces, what, what role, if any, would, would coalition aircraft or coalition forces play in supporting that? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I'm, not, I'm not real comfortable going down the path of, of hypothetical questions. I would just tie us back down to our, to our mission. The mission is to protect civilians. If civilians are attacked, we have an obligation under the Security Council resolution and the mission that's been given to me to protect those civilians. We have no mission to support opposition forces if they should engage in, in offensive operations. Um, and, and so, so that's, I guess I would just leave it at that. We protect civilians. We do not have a mission to support the opposition. Don't you define, uh, even now, rebel forces who are in Benghazi as, as civilians? In effect, I mean, if there were attacks on, on men holding guns who are rebel forces, would you not protect them? It, it, it gets a little bit into, into some, some very specific parsing of, of this question. Because, again, who, who exactly is this opposition? It's, it's clear to me simply from, from watching the the reports from, from many of the organizations that are represented in that room, that many in the opposition uh, truly are civilians, and they are trying to protect their homes, their families, their businesses, and uh, in, in, and in doing that, some of them have taken up arms, but, they are, but, they're, but they're basically civilians trying to protect their, their civilian lives, businesses, and families. There are also, again, having seen reports from many of the organizations in that room, there are also those in the opposition that, that have armored vehicles and that have, and that have heavy weapons. Um, to me, that says that you know, they, they, those entities and those parts of the opposition are, are I would argue, are, are no longer uh, covered under that protect civilian clause. So it's, a, it's not a clear distinction because we're not talking about a regular military force. Uh, it's a very problematic uh, situation. What we try to do and what we are charged with doing is when there are threats to the civilian populace, uh, we are obliged under the mission and under the Security Council resolution to try to protect them. Again, uh, some, you know, sometimes this, these are situations that that, uh, that brief much better at a headquarters than they do in the cockpit of an aircraft. What we have, uh, instructions that we have given to our crews uh, to include down to the kneeboard information that they have is to be very judicious in their application of force. Where they, where they see a clear situation where civilians are threatened, uh, then they are authorized to, and they have in the past, in the, uh, taken action to, to protect those civilians. If it's a situation where, where it's unclear that it is civilians who may be being attacked, uh, then, then those air crews are under instruction to be very cautious and not apply military force, again, unless they are convinced that doing so would be consistent with their mission to protect civilians. Uh, General Chris Lawrence from CNN. Uh, how did the bombing of Muammar Gaddafi's compound tie into the mission of protecting civilians? 
um, I, 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 I think I caught a little bit, of, a little bit of static there, but I think the question was about attacking the, the attacks on the compound last evening. Is that correct? Yes. How did, how did the attack on Gaddafi's compound tie into the mission of protecting civilians? Yep. Okay. That, good. I, I got you loud and clear that time. This is a, a large compound, maybe uh, five or seven hundred meters by uh, by a thousand or, or or more meters. A pretty big place, with lots of different uh, buildings and facilities inside of this compound. Uh, there there are some air defense systems uh, on the perimeter. There's security. Uh, there's there's housing. No, uh, there's uh, uh, normal things, you know, uh, mess kind of facilities, and there's also a command and control facility that we that we are, are certain is a command and control facility, and we have multiple means to that tell us that, and that's the facility that was attacked. And again, we do so with tremendous precision. Uh, we do so in, in, with that particular target. Uh, was decided upon because that degrading that command and control facility uh, would degrade the regime's ability to, to control uh, its military forces uh, in, the, in the, the attack of civilians. So we think there is a very, very direct relationship in the attack on that target and the, the mission that we have. repeatedly from Pentagon officials and military commanders that Gaddafi is not a target. Can you see a situation where he remains in power? Are you worried that, will be, that it will end in a stalemate? Does that concern you? Um, I, I, I do see a situation where that, that could be the case. Um, I, I have, again, it's, it's perhaps easier for me to address that than it is for others because I have a, a very discreet military mission. Uh, and so I could, I, I could see uh, accomplishing the military mission which has been, which has been assigned to me, and the current leader uh, would, would remain the current leader. Is that ideal? I don't think anyone would say that that is ideal, uh, but, but I could envision that as a, as a possible uh, situation at least for the the current mission that I have. I would reiterate, though, uh, that I have no mission uh, to, uh, to attack that, that person, um, and we are not doing so. We are not seeking his whereabouts or anything like that. Uh, we think we have been very effective in, uh, in degrading his ability uh, to control his regime forces, and we're, we think we are seeing that uh, play out in various parts of the country. 